Jim Tozier was not the only person in Blackwood Falls who was finding sleep hard to come by that night. Across town, 12-year-old Rick Pirelli was tossing and turning fitfully in bed, his sheets a sweaty tangle around his feet. His eyelids flickered and he muttered to himself. He kept drifting in and out of wakefulness, though for the most part seemed to be hovering in a kind of limbo, where dreams and reality were knotted together so tightly it seemed impossible to pick them apart. In his mind's eye, he kept seeing the book, kept feeling its binding squirm under his fingers like flesh. Then he was standing by the black tree. Then he was digging beneath it, sliding down between its roots into a stinking, filthy tunnel. Then he was fighting his way through green mist, trying to find his way home. But the mist was getting into his lungs and choking him, stinging his eyes and clamping itself to his face like clammy hands. He fought against it, but it wound itself around his legs like rope. And then Rick was back in his room, in his bed, and it should have been dark, but it wasn't, because the room was lit by a sickly green glow. The glow was coming from the eyes of the werewolf costume he had collected from Tozias that day, and which was now hanging on the back of his door like the pelt of some savage animal. As Rick stared at the costume, it slowly turned its sagging frozen snarl of a face towards him. He cowered in terror beneath the pitiless scrutiny of its blazing, fluorescent eyes, and woke, gasping, sweat or possibly tears running down his cheeks. It was dark in his room. There was no green glow. Rick looked across at the black, lumpy shape of the costume hanging on his door. It wasn't moving. Of course it wasn't. It was lifeless as an old coat. He stretched out a trembling hand and turned on his nightlight. It was a revolving one, Superman flying above the spires of Metropolis. A bit childish, I guessed, but Rick liked it. It made him feel secure somehow, made him feel that with Superman by his side, he was safe from the monsters. That weird guy, the Doctor, had given him a similar feeling. Not that he was a superhero or anything. He just seemed like the sort of guy you'd turn to if... If what? If the monsters really did show up? A little voice whispered in his head before he could stop it. Rick settled back down into his bed and pulled the covers up to his chin. With Superman patrolling the skies beside him, he closed his eyes. But it was a long time before he slept. <laughs>